Hi, I'm Tom Casper, the editor of American Woodworker Magazine, and I'm here to talk about blade tension on your bandsaw and something called the flutter test, which is a way of setting blade tension that uh, you may have heard about. I thought you'd like to know how it works. But just before I even begin with that, I got to tell you that most bandsaws, this one included, really don't need the flutter test in order to set tension. There's a scale on the back of the saw with numbers that correspond to the different widths of blades. And frankly, if you've got a nice sharp blade in your bandsaw, that scale works just fine. On the other hand, if you're getting a cut that uh, doesn't want to track straight, or you're resawing something and you end up with a curved cut instead of a straight cut, there's a number of possibilities of where things can go wrong. One is that the tension isn't set high enough, so you can increase it a bit. And two, which is nine times out of 10, is that your blade isn't sharp. It's hard to tell when they get dull, but that's a sure sign of it. So anyway, uh, let's go into the flutter test. And we're going to do this without referring to the scale at all. OK, so let's begin. OK, I've turned the saw around so you can see everything as it happens. Open the door up. Uh, let's just say, for argument's sake, that you just put the blade on. Tension is set just at a minimal level, so the blade stays on both wheels. And you've tracked the blade by tilting the wheel forward or backwards a little bit so that the blade is centered on the crown of the wheel. And now uh, the next thing we have to do before we uh, start in on the flutter test is to remove the uh, guides out of the way so that the blade would be free to shake back and forth. And then we're going to lift the upper guide way up so that we have a lot of blade exposed. So every saw is different, of course, about how you set your guides. This style saw uses bearings. And in order to spread the guides apart, I need to loosen this screw over here. And then put the wrench in the socket screw right here and just turn the bearing like this. And they uh, rotate on cams. So as you turn the bearing, it actually spreads itself apart. And there we go. And you want to do the same thing underneath the saw. Those two more bearings down there. And next, we're going to raise the guide all the way up so we have a maximum amount of blade exposed. And I know, and believe me, this is a little spooky because you have all these <laughs> sharp teeth exposed. And we're going to be turning the saw on to run it. So just be careful. Don't get your fingers anywhere near this thing at this point. Even though we're going to be turning the tension knob back up here, just stay far away from this. Clear everything off of the saw, and you'll be OK. So hang on a second, and we'll turn the saw on and get the flutter test going. OK, are you ready? Here comes the flutter test. Got the saw plugged in. Close the door. We're going to walk to the other side, far away from the blade. Now remember, I've got the tension set pretty low. So what I'm going to expect when I turn the power on right here is that the blade's going to start to vibrate kind of back and forth. That's what's called flutter. And then what I'm going to do is to start increasing the tension until slowly until the flutter goes away. It's really all that simple. So let's start her up and see what happens, shall we? First, press the if you look right at the blade, it should be just wiggling just a little bit back and forth. And then what you want to do is to start increasing the tension like this. It's going to take more than a few turns to do this. And walk around and observe the blade dead on like this. Keep looking at it as you turn the tension higher and higher and higher. Just keep going like that until you see the blade is just one solid line, no shaking back and forth anymore. And that's really all there is to it. You've set your tension about right then. And I'll bet if you looked around the back side here on the bracket, 
the setting would pretty correspond closely to the size blade that you have. And obviously then you want to set your blade guides close to, well, first you lower the post to whatever working height you need it, and then set both blade guides upper and lower in their appropriate place and you're uh, all good to go.